guests are uh, hope all of us are doing great. I'd like to welcome uh, everyone of us to our channel of uh, Honest Sciences and Mathematics TV channel. In our channel, we discuss the different aspects of mathematics and sciences. And so today, we're going to look at uh, one of the topics uh, in uh, quantum mechanics, and that is uh, the concept of uh, quantum numbers. And this is going to assist us to describe the probable locations of uh, electrons uh, in an atom. And uh, basically, this is going to entail uh, an aspect of various uh, uh, ways of uh, describing uh, this uh, aspect of uh, uh, probable locations using various uh, aspects that we refer to as uh, quantum numbers. So we're going to look at various quantum numbers and how we can be able to describe them and various rules which are going to accompany, of course, uh, uh, them. In that case, I'd like to uh, uh, request our members to go to YouTube and search, search uh, sciences, or rather honest sciences and mathematics channel and subscribe and also engage us in the comment section so that we can uh, assist uh, one another in trying to advance uh, these uh, particular skills and uh, of course knowledge in sciences and mathematics. So without further ado, I uh, thank you and uh, I welcome all of us. <coughs> as, as I've said, uh, the concept of quantum numbers basically is a continuation of uh, what we had uh, looked into on the uh, quantum mechanical model. And this quantum mechanical model describes the uh, aspect of an electron which is uh, going to treat an electron as a particle and a wave at the same time. And from our last discussion, we say that the quantum mechanical model uh, is, uh, describes uh, the probable locations of electrons uh, in atoms, and which of course was an SSO, an elaboration of uh, the Einstein bugs and certainty principle. And of course, from the uh, uh, historical context that we had given on the contribution of a lady probably one of Heisenberg and the Erin Schrodinger in trying to uh, describe this uh, wave mechanical model. Now for today we are going to look at the various quantum numbers and these are going to assist us of course uh, uh, try to appreciate uh, the concept that uh, uh, particularly the study of uh, this wave mechanics as a topic or rather as a concept of describing these electrons is going to assist us uh, describe uh, in an essence the different aspects of electronic uh, structure, uh, which basically is going to fall under the category of our discussion for today of uh, various quantum <coughs> numbers. Now, these quantum numbers are going to be categorized uh, particularly into four groups, and the first one is going to be the principal, the principal quantum number. Uh, which is basically going to describe uh, what we uh, call as shells or energy levels of a given orbital. And we're going to see that uh, from this principal quantum number, this is going to give the distance of a wave. Distance of a wave. As we said that this electron is going to be uh, described as a wave. Or a, so therefore, it's going to give the distance of a wave or an electron. Uh, uh, the distance a wave or an electron is spreads uh, with respect to, to the nucleus, from this electron nucleus uh, model that, uh, or rather electron nucleus system that we have already been uh, discussing on the poles, hydrogen atom uh, uh, atom model. So it's uh, therefore going to be, be denoted using the letter N. And as we have said, uh, this is going to describe, uh, of course, uh, what we refer to as the shell. shell which is denoted as a subset n or the energy uh, or the energy energy level of an orbital or a given orbital so therefore that gives us the essence or the implication of what we refer to as this first set of quantum number that we refer to as the quantum number that we have said it depicts the distance of an electron away from the nucleus and then this is going to describe the the, 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 the energy of a shell, or the shell uh, basically uh, in implying its energy level uh, in that uh, specific orbital. So this is going to have a range of uh, numbers, which are basically going to be integer values uh, ranging from 1 to infinity. So this basically describes uh, this concept of n, which is going to have uh, numbers ranging from uh, 1 to infinity. So that's the first category of uh, quantum numbers that we're going to look into. So next we're going to look at uh, angular momentum, 
But basically what we're going to refer to as secondary quantum numbers which are going to be denoted by using uh, the letter L. So therefore, <coughs> as we have said that the first category is a principal quantum number, we're going to look at the secondary quantum numbers which are referred to as angular momentum. And this angular momentum, which sometimes can be referred to as secondary quantum numbers, or number, it's going to be given by the initial L in this particular case, as the first one was given L, it's going to be given L. So this, in this particular case, we're going to see that one shell divides um, uh, the shells into subshells, and it is, uh, it is derived from, from the principal quantum number that was N uh, that we had given earlier. So therefore, as we say that the range of N is from 1 to infinity positive, we're going to see that uh, for L, this is going to range from a 0 uh, up to a number N minus 1 which basically we have defined N as the uh, principal quantum number. So therefore, we're going to have a generally angular momentum as a range of numbers uh, between 0 and uh, N minus 1. And this we can just have a, a, an illustration. For instance, if we have N given as 1, then therefore that one will have an implication of L <coughs> being 0, being a substitution for that, and giving this uh, from this particular range. And, uh, and then in that case, if n is equals to, then therefore we are going to have l uh, being given as either 0 uh, or 1. It's just a substitution from this. And then if you have n from this specific condition, so therefore if n is equals 3, then therefore the value for l is going to be 0, 1, 2. But we are going to see that... Uh, <coughs> As we continue to do this, there is a, a, a precaution that we have to take so that we can not be in a position to confuse between the normal operations that we do uh, for normal integers and the values of L. In that for L, uh, there are some uh, special characters which we are going to use uh, to denote uh, these uh, specific cases. In that for the value of L, where is, uh, it is equal to zero, this one, of course, is going to be uh, denoted using S, and this is a subshell, so therefore this is a subshell S, and if L is equals 1, then this is going to be uh, denoted by a letter P, subshell, and in that case when L is equals 2, then this is going to be uh, denoted using a P, subshell. And uh, lastly, we're going to see that... Uh, if perhaps L is equal to 3, then we're going to have F uh, being given as, this is a F subshell. And then L is equal to 4, then that one implies we're going to have G a subshell. So in this specific case, if we're going to refer to uh, this angular uh, momentum, uh, secondary quantum number, are uh, using this particular description, this is going to have a consequence of uh, this allowing uh, these specific numbers uh, using this particular condition. So therefore, we have said that for us not to confuse with the normal integers that we normally use, therefore we're going to use special names uh, to denote uh, that uh, particular aspect of uh, the subshells that are listed on the board. So this basically is going to uh, entail the concept of an angular uh, momentum. Uh, which is going to be given as such. So the third category that we're going to look into is what we refer to as magnetic uh, quantum number. So apart from uh, this angular momentum number, the third one, the first one we said is a principal quantum number. The second one we said is, uh, of course, an uh, angular momentum denoted as L. And then the third one is magnetic quantum number and for this uh, magnetic quantum number that we have said it's going to be denoted by ml and then in this case uh, we're going to see that the magnetic quantum number is going to describe the alignment of orbitals along the x y and z uh, axis so if i just give this uh, specific description for x y and z 
Therefore, the arrangement of orbitals along these various axes is going to be denoted by the, uh, I mean, going to be described by the uh, magnetic uh, quantum number. So this is going to give the number of orbitals for each subshell. And this is derived from the secondary quantum number that, of course, we had seen the subsequent one. So therefore, if we try to look at the chronology of uh, this particular number, so we have N, L, and M, L. So the derivative... L is the derivative of N. M is L is the derivative of uh, this specific uh, angular momentum number. And the angular momentum number is a derivative of uh, the principal quantum number, whereby the magnetic uh, quantum number is a derivative of this angular momentum number. So this one as well, we can have a description for, for it, whereby we are going to see that uh, uh, there's a condition whereby uh, it's a derivative of this angular momentum, then therefore if M1 or ML is, ML is equals uh, plus L0, and then this is going to be negative L. So this is also a condition for this uh, particular case. So in our case whereby we have a, a L, equals zero then therefore we're going to have ml also equal to zero and then next if uh, l is as equals to one in this case we're going to have a uh, so the first case for this description is where l is equals zero is equals m is equals zero and this is going to describe uh, what we refer to as the s subshell and in the second case, when L is equivalent to 1, then ML is going to have values of plus. So I'll just do away this. So ML, if L is equals 1, then ML is going to have the values of plus 1, 0, and ne negative 1. And that is going to uh, have, of course, uh, the implication of as having so the first one we can describe it as a single orbital for l is equals to zero so for this one we have a positive one a zero and negative one and this is going to be three orbitals so for the first implication which has had a single orbital that was for the s subshell for the second one whereby l is equals one ml which is a magnetic quantum number which is describing the orbitals is going to have three orbitals for this this and this and therefore we're going to see that uh, this is going to be are described as the P subshell. So we are going to expect the arrangement of three orbitals on the X, Y, Z plane uh, for that, this particular magnetic uh, a quantum number. And if L is equals to, try to look at the implication of that, if L is equals to, then therefore M uh, is going to be plus two, uh, one, uh, zero, negative one, negative 2. So if we try to look at uh, this uh, particular arrangement for these orbitals, this is going to be, so for each number, this one in this particular case for ML, it represents an orbital. So this plus 2, 1 orbital, plus 2, 2 orbitals, 3 orbitals, 4 orbitals, 5. So the first one was FSP. So this is going to represent the P subshell, which is going to contain 5 orbitals. So 5 orbitals, for the dish subshell which is L uh, is equals for the angular momentum which is equivalent to 2. So lastly if we have uh, L is equals 3 so if the value of L is equals 3 then therefore we're going to have plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 0 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 using this particular condition so it's going to have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 orbitals and this is going to be described as the f subshell so it goes in that specific order and this basically as we have said is used to describe uh, the uh, al alignment of uh, orbitals in the x and y z uh, axis and this gives the number of orbitals for each subshell as we have uh, already been demonstrating uh, using this so lastly we're going to look at the last bit of uh, uh, these quantum numbers and that is what you refer to as uh, the spin quantum number 
So this spin quantum number forms our fourth category and the last one of all these quantum numbers that we're going to look into. So this is your spin quantum number, which is going to be denoted as Ms. That is our category number four. So <coughs> in this case, the spin quantum number, uh, we're going to see, of course, earlier on we discussed that uh, electrons in an orbital can spin of course, this is uh, just to introduce it as a new concept. Of course, electrons in an orbit can spin in only uh, two directions. And we're going to see this one being elaborated in some of the principles, especially the uh, Pauli's exclusion principle, which we're going to uh, see later. That is, states that no two electrons can have identical values for the four quantum numbers that we have discussed. This one be the, being the last of the four quantum numbers. Whereby we are going to have uh, some conditions whereby an orbital can only uh, be able to contain two electrons. And these, of course, electrons are going to be, of course, aligned in a specific way. Whereby we have two possibilities, which are going to be either positive or negative a half, depicted as positive a half or a negative a half, or positive a half and negative a half, respectively. So I'm going to do a small tabulation for this specific uh, case for spin uh, quantum numbers so that we can be able to have an insight into what basically this one uh, illustrator is trying to explain. So this one in a summary is trying to give us the relationship between the, the number of uh, shells, subshells, the number of orbitals and the number of electrons, uh, maximum number of electrons that can be contained in those uh, specific shells. And we're going to also see that uh, from this particular description is a summary of uh, what we have uh, already discussed. So therefore, if we have one uh, shell uh, which is containing S uh, orbital, then we're going to have one orbital that is going to contain a maximum of two electrons. Now, suppose we have uh, energy shell number two. This is going to contain a three, uh, I mean, uh, an S orbital and a P orbital. And as we have said, an S orbital con consists of one an S uh, subshell consists of one orbital, while a P subshell uh, consists of uh, three orbitals. So in total, the, the N2 is going to contain four <coughs> orbitals, whereby each orbital consists of a maximum of two electrons. So therefore, this is going to contain eight. And the energy level number three, this is going to contain uh, S, P, and D orbitals. And as we have said, of course, uh, these subshells are going to contain uh, consists of uh, this uh, specific number of uh, orbitals uh, for OS equals one orbital P maximum three orbitals D five orbitals for the M L that we have discussed for the positive L zero and then minus L this is going to give us the value for these orbitals in this particular case and lastly for using that principle of uh, maximum of uh, two electrons per orbital therefore this is going to contain eighteen etc. So that is going to form a summary of uh, basically the orbital. And this one in an essence is going to give us a formula for describing the spin quantum, or rather the number, a summary that can, can give us the number, maximum number of electrons in a shell, which is going to be given as N2. So therefore, this is the formula that we're going to use, the formula that we're going to use in finding the number of electrons having been given this a particular range of uh, information for the NL. ML ETC. So next we're going to look at a few principles and some of the rules which are going to assist us in designating electronic configuration for various atoms and that is going to open for us a way in which we can be able to describe our various elements uh, in form of their electronic uh, configuration and later on understanding the trends across the uh, periodic table. So I hope that uh, this has been elaborate for us. Uh, let's catch up in our next video on uh, off-board principle and other ways in which we can be able to, uh, of course, describe the electronic uh, configuration as I've said. So that is it for now, guys. By God bless you.